I'm gonna be doing a little breakout session with you today and a pose that I see done wrong quite a bit in class. And that's Virabhadrasana 3, our warrior three pose. I think the problem arises is because we think of this primarily as a balance pose. And as long as we don't fall over, we think we've done the pose properly. But there's lots of little intricacies that we tend to forget or just do wrong. So I wanna show you my little trick on how to perfect this pose. The only thing that you're gonna need is a little bit of wall space maybe a set of yoga blocks. So let's take a look at our pose and see what we find. Let's just take a look at the pose at hand to get started. And then I wanna review with you some of the areas where we go wrong. Like I said, we think if we don't fall over, we're already in our pose. Typically in a class setting, I'll probably cue this from a pike position, and then we can focus on floating the leg. The first thing I see is heads way down here, right? just kind of collapsing into the pose. I even see people trying to balance with their arms down here. We need to actively engage the muscles of the back and try to get the crown and the heel on the same plane. That's typically one of the first things I notice. The second one, which is also common, is the toe and the hip turn out, right? So I, my hip is peeling, I'm exaggerating slightly, but this hip needs to be pointing towards the ground. There's an inner spiral of the thigh, so the toes are also pointing downwards. The third thing that I see is a really floppy back leg, so you'll notice my knee is bending. We need to energetically push through the heel, right? So I have a nice long line, hip is square to the ground, we extend through the heel. Once we have all those teaching points in place, then we can focus on releasing the blocks and working on the arms. Once we feel secure, inner spiral of that thigh, crown is lifted, pushing and extending through that leg. The arms reach back first, right? That is the easiest. Trying not to hold the breath. Then the arms can come out to the side for your progression. The most challenging one is trying to get the arms all the way up by the ears, right? So extending and reaching. The one other place where I make you this in class is from a lunge position. So if I was in a lunge pose and I shifted my body weight forward, there's a tendency to just float the leg. The blocks need to travel with you, right? So always making sure that if you're using blocks, they're right underneath your shoulders, then focus on everything else. So those are all the places that we go wrong. Now, how can we use the wall to help us master this pose? The first thing you'll need to do is figure out where you need to be in relation to the wall. So if I come into a little pike position, I should be standing right about at the point where my feet are. Facing the wall, and you wanna start by creating a flat back. It actually feels kinda of like a downward dog. Arms are straight, the gaze is down, so my ears and my arms are aligned. Same thing as in our pose. Pull and contract the abdominals in, and then extend and reach one leg back. Here I can focus on having my toes point towards the ground, inner spiral of the thigh, hip bones pointing down. Here's my pose, and I don't have to worry so much about balance. I can just feel what it feels like. Similar, a little more challenging, we can also do it facing this direction. The hardest part about this is just to figure out where this leg needs to be. So I wanna create one straight line from my heel to my hip, so no bending in that knee. Blocks are right underneath your shoulders, hip bone points to the ground. Here we focus on engaging the backside. Here's our warrior three. Then you can play with your arms, right? And I don't have to balance as much, but I am working extra hard with those muscles to achieve my pose. Here's one more thing to think about, especially in an active practice, but all poses stem from Tadasana. So, what would Tadasana do? What would Mountain Pose do? If I'm here and I'm engaged, right, all I'm gonna do is hinge from the lever, right? So everything stays straight, my legs stay straight, my core is engaged, my heart is open, I come into my pose. At no point am I floppy, right? I'm extending the same way a Mountain Pose would, squeezing through the thigh here, squeezing through the thigh here. Right, so if you're ever feeling that you are not so challenged in a practice, I want you to ask yourself, what would Tadasana do? Once you've felt the expression against the wall, then we can work on more of an integrative approach where we're balancing. 
And then we're using our muscle memory, right, to come into proper form on what we felt against the wall. We have other tutorials like these on the channel to help you deepen your practice. Hopefully I'll get a chance to work with you again soon on your mat. Namaste.